Our word of the day, our word of the day comes from the book of Titus, chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. That's Titus chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. And it says, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men and women. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Amen. Interesting verse of the day. I guess we all should start the new year out living righteously and godly and soberly. But this word is telling us that, you know, we have grace. It says in the beginning of this, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It's the grace of God that helps us to live righteously and ungodly, denying ourselves from worldly things. It's not we ourselves that can do this. It's God that has to do it in each and every one of us. So I know it's it's like we think we just have to go out and just start doing these things all of a sudden. And we just want to just, you know, because we want to please God. We want to do what the word says. And we do. We want to live the way God wants us to live. We want to live up to what he, he has for us. But we can't do those things without him. And he tells us that. If we learn anything in this life, it's all the will of God for our lives to do everything that he has for us to do. He is the one that changes us. He helps us with ungodliness and worldly lusts. If we ask, if we ask him to do it, he will do it. That's just how it goes. We want to live the way Christ lived and walk the way he walks. We have to ask him to do it. In Titus 3, 3, verse it says, For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. This is who we used to be. Are we these same people now? Absolutely not. Every day we get to be molded more and more into Christ. The word changes us. The word molds us. The, the word fills our hearts. In Psalms and Proverbs, it always says, write these things in the tablet of your heart. These are where these things dwell. We used to have these foolishness. We were disobedient. We did our own thing, and we pleased our own selves, and we, you know, hated people. But now we are a new creation in Christ. We are not the same as we were before. Praise the Lord for that. In Acts 17, 30, it says, Truly, times of ignoring God's overlooked. Truly, these times of annoyance, annoyance, ignoring God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. This is when God calls us, when he called us to him. He called us all to repent. He wants this whole world to repent. If the world repented, just imagine how truly blessed and how much at peace we would all be. How much the grace of God would just overflow with abundance over everywhere and everyone. But we are not ignorant to know that these things will not happen because men walk in darkness and they love darkness better than light. We can see that if if these people who are running the wars and the violence would just come out of the darkness and just repent. And that's all God is asking us to do. 
to repent, to just lay down and surrender to him and let him do the rest. That's all that's required. And that's what we all have come to understand and realize that we of ourselves can do nothing. We can't change ourselves. We can't take the things in our heart that stare out. We have to continue to keep our eyes and our focus on the Lord. And that is the theme of this year, to keep our eyes and our focus looking to him. And we will be blessed. It's going to be amazing how much God changes us and changes those we pray for. Because we pray for our children. We pray for our husband and our, and our wives and, and our friends. We pray for all of them to just repent and come to know the Lord. That's our prayers all the time. That they are able to surrender their lives to you. But we know that God is the only one that can do it. So we continue to pray for them every day. God does his work in them and by his grace, because we know that God is full of grace and mercy and love. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, it says, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? God desires all men to be saved and women and children. He desires them all to come to the knowledge of truth. So we will have no more wars. We will have no more violence. We will have no more hatred. We will have no unforgiveness. We will live in mercy and grace and peace. This is what God wants. All men and women and children to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. This is why we continue to pray for them, our families and our children and our loved ones and our friends. We desire for them to come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. 2820, it says, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am always with you, even to the end of the age. Amen. Always with us. He will continue to teach us all and bless us all. Our job is to continue to put our faith and our trust in him. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for taking us out of darkness and bringing us into your light. We thank you for being us with us every day. We thank you for just all that you do. Help us to just continue to keep our eyes and our focus on you all the time. Continue to bless us as we walk in this world and protect us and continue to pour your mercy and your grace and your love on each and every one of us. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you all peace today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. You all have a wonderful day in the Lord.